Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Teresa Marantet, CEO and Chief Nursing Officer of the Windsor Essex County Health Unit. As we start the day, we know that there is a planned gathering this morning. Under the current orders, gatherings of more than 10 people are not allowed. This is for a reason. Being in close contact with others can spread the virus. If you choose to attend, please do so safely and keep all public health measures in mind. First of all, stay home if you are sick or have any symptoms of COVID. Maintain a two meter distance from others. Use hand sanitizer, off, hand sanitizer often. Use proper uh, respiratory etiquette by coughing into your sleeve or elbow. Wear a face covering, each and every one of you, and refrain from yelling or shouting as this could compromise the integrity of the mask and spread the respiratory droplets further. We all have all done a good job so far preventing community spread. Let's continue to protect ourselves and protect others. There are 101,963 confirmed cases of COVID-19 in Canada and 33,853 cases in Ontario. Chatham-Kent has 157 cases and Sarnia-Landon has reported 285 cases. Michigan now has 61,630 cases with 11,426 cases being in Detroit. Today, we are reporting 1,365 cases of COVID-19 in our community, an increase of four cases from yesterday. One person works in the egg farm sector and two people are household contacts of the case. 808 cases have now been resolved 471 people are self-isolating. 22% of our cases are between the ages of 20 and 29 years, 21% are between the ages of 30 and 39 years, and 17% of our cases are between the ages of 40 and 49. 58% are male and 41% are female. Our community has lost a total of 68 people to COVID. 49 deaths have occurred among residents in long-term care and retirement homes. There is one long-term care home experiencing a COVID outbreak, and there are currently six workplaces in the agriculture sector experiencing a COVID-19 outbreak. Symptoms of COVID-19 range from mild respiratory or flu-like symptoms to severe. Some common symptoms include fever, a new or worsening cough, a barking cough, chills, sore throat, and shortness of breath. Call 911 if you have difficulty breathing and are struggling to breathe or speak or experiencing severe chest pain or if you are feeling confused or losing consciousness. Please be reminded that Windsor Essex has two COVID assessment centers, Erie Shores Healthcare in Leamington and Windsor Regional Hospital Alut Campus. SOHAC, the Southwest Origin Ontario Aboriginal Health Access Center in Windsor also offers testing for First Nations, Métis, and Inuit people and their families. Please continue to visit our website at wechu.org for the most current information and case counts. I will now turn it over to Dr. Wajid Ahmed, our Medical Officer of Health, for further updates. Hey, good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us again. Um, yesterday, we issued a Class Action 22 order uh, and more details on providing the uh, details on the face covering that we have issued. This new order becomes effective on June the 26th, and it requires all owners or operators of a commercial establishment in Windsor Essex to prohibit the entry of any person who's not wearing a face covering unless the person cannot wear one due to any medical or religious reason. Commercial establishments are defined under the order include any place that are open to the public and offer goods or services, including retail stores, convenience stores, malls and plazas, restaurants, personal service settings, grocery stores, bakeries, farmer's market, gas stations, uh, including the area where uh, people pay uh, and uh, buy stuff mechanic shop and car dealership. As we know, COVID-19 spreads from person to person through infective respiratory droplets. When worn appropriately, a non-medical 
face mask, a face covering is a very effective tool in reducing the spread of COVID-19 from person to person. This does not exclude the, uh, the reason for physical distancing of two meters. And also it does not exclude the reason for appropriate hand washing with soap and water uh, and avoiding touching your face and staying home when you're sick. It is very important for people who are required to self-isolate for a reason, either a confirmed case of COVID or have been identified as a close contact of a confirmed case. They should continue to remain in isolation and uh, continue to stay home following the recommendations of public health. There are a number of uh, the tools that are available on our website. Uh, please visit our website to, uh, to know more about how to safely wear a non-medical mask or face covering. The key piece is ensuring that the face mask is worn appropriately. Maintaining physical distancing is still the key, and this uh, additional measure would help people in, in places where physical distancing cannot be maintained. To view some of those details and some of the areas where these masks are used is permitted versus where the areas where mask use is not uh, required are details available on the order and ensuring that uh, the interaction area where public is uh, coming in contact with the store employees and other customers, those areas are covered uh, by, the, by the order. The rest of the area such as break room or facilities where employees congregate and have lunch or uh, have a breakout room, they are not required to wear the mask, even though physical distancing uh, is still recommended at all times as per public health measures. An individual can choose to, to, uh, 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 to not to wear a mask if they have any medical condition, but, the, uh, but the, uh, the employers and the store owners are required to ensure that all, they have all these policies in place. Thank you. The conference is now unmuted. We'll now take questions from media. We'll start with CTV. Uh, yeah, Dr. Ahmed, how are you this morning? Uh, I just wanted to ask, uh, you're, just get your thoughts on the number of low cases today. I see there's only four and there's only one in the agri. So uh, Doug Ford was saying this morning on AM 800 that he'd like to see the numbers in the next few days to see how that goes and then, you know, hopefully make a decision uh, as a province. So you've got to be encouraged by the fact that there's only four new cases and one from the agri. Uh, thanks, Bob. I, I do think that we have seen uh, these number of cases uh, consistently in our community. Um, and every time we're looking at the case uh, count in our community and how the community cases are going, it has been in, um, uh, in a fairly reasonable number, less than 10. And in some days, it's just less than five. <clears throat> so those are definitely encouraging signs. Um, and uh, we have to remember that there are still testing ongoing in these farms. And uh, when you are testing more people, uh, you will find more cases. So I think that's why the numbers keep fluctuating. But we are looking forward to it that when we have those consistent data that shows what's going on in, in the community and also as an overall picture, putting all this all together in, in defining what is happening in Missouri and Essex, I think that would definitely be helpful for uh, the provincial decision to uh, support us uh, to move forward to stage two. Okay, yeah, somebody's got to turn their mute on. Uh, anyway, moving on to the next one here real quick. Um, I'm just wondering about the masks and, uh, you know, the enforcement, I guess, the, the policing of, of businesses and residents wearing masks starting Friday. Um, how will you go about that? So that's a good question, and, and we recognize that uh, the enforcement and policing is a challenge, but we do know that uh, there are uh, a large number of people who are already wearing the mask uh, in, in all these establishments, because our recommendation has always been there to ensure that in places where you cannot wear a mask, uh, you sh uh, sorry, in, where you cannot maintain a physical distancing, you should consider wearing a mask. So I think this is now being more formalized to uh, to ensure that uh, there are policies in place uh, at these all these establishments where we know that uh, that there are more people are in the in, within these establishments and they will be coming in co close contact with others where physical distancing cannot be maintained. So the hope is the everyone will take it very responsibly and do their part and uh, and and wear the mask uh, in these establishments. 
recognizing that there will be people who will uh, have some kind of a medical condition or any reasons for not wearing the mask. So uh, it's uh, we don't want to uh, exclude those individuals. So it's, uh, it, it would be permitted under their policy that if for any reason a person cannot wear a mask for many, many medical reasons, they will not be uh, turned away for a, a based on disorder. I'm sorry, can I get one more in real quick? Sure. Just, just wanted to ask you, like, is there a timeline on on this uh, class action 22? Like, do, do you do you have an idea of how long you might imp impose this? So that's a good question. Um, I think right now the the information is uh, constantly changing, flowing with respect to how the pandemic is evolving locally as well as provincially and federally. So I I don't have an end date right now in my mind, but we'll continue to revisit and reassess the situation and uh, make changes accordingly. All right, thank you. Any questions from CBC? Uh, yes, Dr. Ahmed, good morning. Um, you had previously said that um, the spikes in cases among agri-farm workers were not much of a surprise because of the case and contact management and the way it spreads. I'm just curious if you have any indication on how many more cases you're expecting there um, through case and contact management protocol? So we are following up on anyone who is uh, presumed to be symptomatic or uh, have a positive COVID test. And then based on that information, obviously our case and contact management start. We do our case investigation outbreak assessment and then follow up accordingly. So when that happens, we have a handle or we know um, uh, or how many uh, contacts are potentially self-isolating at this point. Um, so we have uh, um, we have now gone down to seven farms with uh, with cases now, uh, with two or more cases. I think that's what the number uh, Teresa reported today. Um, but there are asymptomatic testing or surveillance testing that's happening in these farms. And as we know, if uh, the uh, if they're truly asymptomatic and they're being tested, so it would be uh, it would be hard to predict what that number would look like. Uh, but just by this number of volume, like even when we're talking about false positives and uh, and whatnot, um, if you're testing, let's say even 100 people, mm -hmm. you will have a possibility that you will you may get some false positive, or maybe someone who have had a previous infection that are resolving. So there, there so there may be positives uh, a, even in the farms, which uh, we can consider that right now at this point is truly asymptomatic. Uh, what that number would be, I cannot predict, but the hope is uh, we, we it, it shouldn't be that uh, that big of a number, uh, especially uh, from an infectious perspective. And uh, we are uh, we are working with uh, we will be working with all these uh, cases that will come back positive, and we'll continue to do our public health case and contact management and any potential outbreak investigation. Thank you, Dr. Ahmed. Actually, Teresa Maritab wanted to add something to that, Katie. Thank you. Uh, just to clarify that there are six uh, agricultural uh, sector farms that are in outbreak right now. Thank you. And the bulk of the positive cases that we're seeing, are they coming from those six farms that are under outbreak right now? So the numbers that we reported uh, yesterday, uh, the increase of 30 cases, the majority of those cases are from uh, a testing that occurred in a farm, and we all but one. And we are following up with all of those cases. So as we do more testing and uh, you know determine their contacts, there could be more numbers. Thank you so much. Any questions from Blackburn? Yeah, I guess I'm just curious. Um, at the beginning of all this testing and the, the, the length of time it took for tests to come back was a, was a big concern. Uh, is that under control now? And are we seeing, is that a positive thing when it comes to the agri-farm that you're getting the tests back, hopefully in a quick succession so you can do that case and contact management in a, in a quicker form? I'll try to answer that. Um, so far, we, have, we are seeing a good uh, quick turnaround time on these testing uh, within one to two days uh, for most of our cases. Uh, but mind you, there are a number of testing that are happening, um, uh, which we may not be aware of uh, from uh, the 
Ontario Health congregate testing policies. Um, and uh, we get the positive results only. And generally speaking, we're getting the positive results within one to two days. So that is definitely very helpful. And it helps us in, uh, in do a quick case and contact management follow-up. Any questions from AM800? Yeah, uh, can you just story quickly clarify, Dr. Ahmed, because we received a message um, that is different from the list yesterday of places that must include a face covering. Is outdoor farmers markets included in this? Um, no, for the fixed farmers market that are typically indoors that are uh, that are included. Okay, so the outdoor farmers markets people don't have to wear a face covering. Well, uh, my recommendation is always there to uh, to wear the face covering when physical distancing cannot be maintained, uh, but it won't be a, a requirement uh, under the way that uh, we have uh, we have listed right now. Okay, um, this might go along with um, Bob's question a little bit, but uh, so if someone can't prove or you know that they have a health condition or a reason for not wearing a face covering when entering a commercial business, will there be actual penalties that are enforced or like, I mean, from a, a fine perspective or like, you know, what is the purview of the health unit in this case? Sorry, Chris Dilley, I believe we've uh, lost Dr. Ahmed. Give us one okay. second. Oh. Okay. Sorry, can you hear me now? Oh, there yeah. we go. Sorry. Uh, yeah, no, I was saying that uh, um, the the order is specific for the commercial establishments to have policies in, uh, and uh, procedures in place to, uh, to enforce uh, the mask policy in their establishment. Um, and uh, the hope is that anyone who is visiting those establishments will be doing their part in following those recommendations and policies uh, and wear a face covering, uh, especially in, 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 in all of these areas where they will, physical distancing will be a challenge. We hope that uh, through this uh, uh, approach, uh, the, the people will follow that. And obviously, uh, we are, we're hoping that uh, education will work and uh, if, uh, if all of those things are in place, we should be uh, able to uh, to do our part in reducing, reducing the transmission. But having said that, obviously this is a requirement uh, for the establishments to have all these policies, uh, and uh, we, we will hope that, that everything will be in place and we wouldn't get to in a situation where uh, we have to end up issuing fines. And uh, everyone needs to cooperate and everyone needs to support uh, their recommendations and policies. Uh, sorry, the order, and uh, do their part. Okay, so the, the health unit does have the power to issue fines to a commercial establishment if it's found that or proved that they're letting people in without face covering, if they're able to wear them? That is correct, yes. Do you, is, it, is it like dollar amount fine or? Well, there, uh, under the uh, Health Promotion and Protection Act, uh, there is a maximum limit to how much of that found fine could be. For individuals, it is up to five thousand dollars. For uh, for uh, a business establishment, it could be up to twenty five thousand um, dollars. But again, as I said, uh, the uh, the go the hope is uh, we don't we we shouldn't get into that situation, and uh, everyone will just comply and uh, follow the order. Okay, thank you. Any questions from Windsor? Right? Uh, yesterday, Premier Doug Ford announced that uh, the province is working on a plan um, for the agri-farm sector. Um, has the health unit been consulted on that plan? And if so, do you have any uh, idea what that might be about? So obviously, um, uh, just like we presented yesterday, that the health unit is doing lots of work. Uh, a lot of that work is happening. Uh, and uh, maybe we're not talking about it, but that doesn't mean that health unit is not involved. Health unit is always involved in, uh, in all of these conversations, even from the asymptomatic testing, which is currently being led by Ontario Health. But a lot of those conversations in, is still involves health unit in many ways. And on the same idea, in terms of the planning pieces, in terms of the regional reopening, uh, all of these conversations are happening with the different levels of government, and uh, we're sharing our uh, our public health expertise, our public health advice, and also uh, sharing what exactly is happening at, at, at the at the at the forefront, and uh, and and well, you, 
you can say that those are some of the reasons that when you hear from the province or from the premier and uh, from the minister, uh, they understand the work of public health and uh, they know what's going on and they support us in, 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 in all of these in initiatives. And uh, we'll continue to work with them, but uh, all of these uh, recommendations will definitely help the industry as a whole and the, as a region as a whole. Uh, there are a lot of conversation that's happening and hopefully some of those details will be revealed soon. Any questions from the Windsor Star? Hi, Dr. Ahmed. Uh, returning to Doug Ford's most recent comments, uh, he mentioned earlier this morning that uh, there's a possibility of Windsor entering stage two uh, selectively out of the region. What's your response to that? Well, I guess uh, just like when we're looking at the data, uh, the data tells us the story of uh, what's happening locally, where these cases are, and if these any, any of these cases are linked specifically to workplace outbreaks, and uh, if that's contained uh, in so many ways. So when when thinking about any of these uh, uh, public health measures or public health benefits and public health risks, uh, we we look into all of these options. And uh, some of these conversations have already been happening in terms of where exactly are these cases. We presented in our epi summary uh, that majority of these cases that we have seen in the last uh, 30 days are uh, limited to uh, to the two municipalities in our region. And uh, what does that mean? And if what kind of risk uh, it will it will entail if we move from stage one to stage two, what kind of additional risks that would be involved. So all of those discussions obviously are happening. And uh, um, I think uh, some of these decisions eventually rest with the, with the province that what uh, they uh, what they allow and what they do not allow. As Teresa mentioned, there are people assembling outside of Wechu right now uh, to protest. There is an online petition calling for uh, either your removal or your resignation. Uh, Doug Ford has uh, defended you personally. Th this all seems to be a lot of negative attention for you. How is it affecting you? Uh, that's a good question. I think uh, it, it is uh, definitely stressful. I won't deny that fact. Um, and uh, it's also stressful for our staff. Uh, we have a dedicated team of staff, more than 240 or 240 staff. Uh, that are working at the health unit during this pandemic. I, I want to say that, uh, well, most of the uh, residents and uh, well, of Windsor and Essex may not be working, but these staff have been working tirelessly. They've been putting in extra hours. Uh, they've been doing work nonstop seven days a week, which is very different from what uh, our five days work routine looks like. The amount of stress, the amount of uh, attention, the amount of uh, uh, criticism is definitely it's it's weighing up on uh, weighing uh, on all of them, and I think it's unfair for uh, for for people who do not really understand the work of public health to come out and criticize um, the the ministry, the the health minister, the premier. They know what public health work is and what's going on, and uh, our board they are heavily involved in what we do, uh, and they truly understand some of that work. And 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 uh, we we feel comfortable to to know that uh, they do not think that uh, uh, we are uh, we're we're not working. And in fact, they they feel that we are really working hard to uh, and going above and beyond what our typical role is to support the community, to do our part. So it is it is unfair. Uh, and again, I would just say that uh, uh, the staff uh, I think they they deserve. Um, better and our community deserves better. It's not the time to uh, point fingers and it's not the time to to say things which is uh, uh, which is not necessarily public health. I think everyone should be should step up and take their own responsibility instead of saying and shifting attention from the real issue. Uh, and this is unfortunate and uh, it, it should stop. We've seen mask wearing, unfortunately, become an explosive issue in the United States. There's been reported incidents of, of violence, even fatal violence, over the mask issue. What concern is that? Uh, what concern is there that uh, introducing the mask rule here in Windsor Essex will create con confrontational situations? Well, we definitely want any kind of confrontational situation, and uh, the idea is uh, as a as a community responsibility. When we are looking at how far ahead we come across as a community during this pandemic, I think uh, our community, 
our region has done remarkably well in terms of doing their part with physical distancing following the public health measures. And uh, that's why we, are, we have seen a significant drop in the community cases in the last two months. And, uh, and a lot of the people I know are following all these guidelines, even when it, when it, was, a, when it was a recommendation to wear a mask. I have seen personally many people wearing the mask when they're out there. Um, so I'm not anticipating anything uh, similar to what, uh, uh, like a, in these extreme circumstances, would, would happen. Uh, we're just hoping that uh, the uh, individuals take it, 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 their personal responsibility to not only protect themselves, but protect everyone around them. Thank you. Any further questions from CTV? I think I'm good for today. Thank you. CBC? Uh, yes, Dr. Ahmed. I just wanted your thoughts on the protests that are planned for right now outside of the health unit today. Uh, thoughts regarding what? Uh, sorry, the, uh, there is protest planned um, outside of the health unit today, this morning. Um, I believe over reopening. Um, and just wanted your comments on those protests. Well, as uh, uh, Teresa mentioned in her speech that, uh, um, you know, uh, we can understand that people are upset. Uh, it's been uh, three months. We understand it more than anyone else. We have like how hard we are working and we are supporting the community and uh, individuals who are experiencing some of these uh, challenges, whether it's about uh, the businesses or whether it's about the social challenges. <laughs> So all those things are happening right now, and there are a number of issues that uh, that's uh, that's uh, affecting the community from a social and economic perspective. So I understand that. I share their concerns. I and I just like everyone else. I also want us to move to stage two, but uh, having these type of protests can also put others at risk when people are congregating in larger numbers. The entire goal of public health is to ensure that. Uh, uh, you know, all these uh, measures are in place to protect and pre prevent the spread of COVID-19 in the community. So if people are choosing to do that, they need to take appropriate measures in terms of physical distancing and, and uh, um, with respect to wearing a mask appropriately when physical distancing cannot be maintained. Hydration is important. We're looking at the, at the time of uh, the year when the temperatures are, uh, are, uh, are, are high and uh, could easily put anyone at risk of dehydration. When people are shouting and screaming, it can, it can uh, swallow their mask that they're wearing and it can also affect that, any of their ability to breathe in this, in this type of mask. So I would just remind people to, to follow all these measures and uh, in the end, I understand their pain, I understand their frustration and anger but uh, I want to assure all of the residents up in there and that uh, your health unit has been working hard right from day one to not only support the community, but also to protect the health and well-being, including societal and economic disruption in our community. Thank any, you. Any further questions from Blackburn? Uh, no, I'm okay, thanks. M800? Uh, just quickly, uh, it was uh, stated on CTV National this morning that um, people that are trying to mobile test at some of the agriculture places out in the county are experiencing blockades put up by the farmers. Is this something you've experienced? Um, I'm not aware of that, so I can't really comment. Uh, uh, definitely, uh, like, uh, I, I'm not aware, sorry. Okay, that's okay, thank you. Any further questions from Windsor Eight? No, thanks. Windsor Star? No, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Have a good day.